Hi everybody, welcome back to VMware Explore 2024. You're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. This is day three, Rob Strecce is on set two. Going wall to wall coverage, extracting the signal from the noise. John Furrier was here. He's actually now in New York City at the New York Stock Exchange, uh, doing some stuff with our studios down there. So we're super excited. A lot of action going on at theCUBE. This is our 15th year at VMware Explore slash VMworld. Sam Nimi is here. He's a senior product manager uh, for, uh, for VMware Solutions team uh, lead at Dell Technologies. And we're going to dig into some of the things that are going on in uh, the space, in the storage space, and the hyperconverged. Great to see you, Sam. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, so v, uh, VxRail it was interesting. We saw the ascendancy of, v, of VxRail mid last decade. It was actually really interesting. Uh, Dell decided to get into the market in a big way. Uh, you became the top player. That's right. You know, based on the data that we had. Um, no question about it. Um, and so, what's the update? Uh, how has the Broadcom acquisition affected uh, your relationship there? Where are we at now and where are we headed? Sure, and I uh, appreciate the question. First off, we're really happy to be here. Uh, VxRail, um, you know, we've been uh, building VxRail now for eight years. Uh, we've been building solutions on top of VxRail, like uh, VCF and VxRail for the last four or five years. Um, and we have, a, have had a, a really tight, a very well-maintained relationship with Broadcom for a long time. Um, you know, I, I was looking actually the other day, uh, the first Dell VCF solution was nine years ago in three days. So we've been, we've been doing this for some time. We were the first, uh, and I like to think the best co-engineered system. Now as far as the, the question about Broadcom relationship, um, I mean we are, we are as built into Broadcom, as tight with Broadcom as we ever have been. Um, we've been building a VxRail solution and have now uh, really happy to you know, announce and provide VxRail subscriptions or, or VMware subscriptions sold directly with VM, uh, uh, VxRail for the first time uh, just as of last month. So we're in a, a really good place now where uh, you know, customers who have come to know, enjoy, adopt VxRail for the single throat to choke can do so uh, continuously right through a VxRail order. And so you call uh, Dell for support, you call Dell for hardware maintenance, software support, et cetera, all sold, bought on a single piece of paper with VxRail. So I shared, I, I talked to some customers who shared with me that they got in under the wire yeah. where they could still acquire perpetual licenses from Dell. That's right. And I think that was, there was a window after the acquisition, which was November of 2023. I think it went through the spring, maybe around April. They got in underneath, so they were able to get perpetual. But at the come April, that was when you had to transition over to subscription. Two part question, first of all, sure. what happens to those perpetual customers? You service those based on the contract that you, you sign with them, right? Yep, They're nothing, good. Nothing right? changes. So um, within VxRail, you know, even when a, uh, let's say a support ticket comes in, we service 97% of those support tickets ourselves, just Dell. Nothing changes for those customers. You're still calling 1-800-DELL for support. Uh, nothing changes for perpetual customers, nothing changes for our subscription customers. Still the same VxRail experience from you know, four, six, seven, eight years ago uh, that we're able to offer today. So nothing okay. changes there. And then, so April comes, now you cut over to the new model, but the cutover to the new model involves you know, a lot of dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's, so that, that, that kind of put a pause on things. But now you're saying as of, what'd you say, last month? Yes. Yeah, you're uh, able now to sell subscriptions, so what does that look like? Yeah, and that's a great question, thank you. So as of September, tw or sorry, September, uh, July 22nd, I'm thinking ahead, I'm always thinking ahead as a product Summer's manager. Summer's over, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> product <laughs> managers were always looking ahead, the past is behind. Um, but as of July 22nd, uh, we're able to offer VVF and VCF subscriptions for VxRail. So customers who you know, want to have a, a single entity to deal with, a single place to buy their licensing, their hardware, their support, one-stop shop, uh, we're now able to offer that direct with VxRail purchases, and we couldn't be more excited about it. Okay, so I can buy VCF and VVF from Dell. That's right. It, with VxRail bundled in, all integrated, and you're, you're now you've developed that engineered system and you've got a roadmap around that, is that right? Yeah, absolutely, and um, you know, one, one thing that we keep hearing from our customers here is the excitement that's building around 9.0, uh, 
Uh, we've got 9.0 on our roadmap. We're looking forward, you know, even beyond that. We're going to be building VxRail solutions, uh, VxRail systems with even more automation, more flexibility, more enhancements for years to come. I want to ask you about 9.0, because I think in 5.2, so it, it helped, tell me if this is right. Prior to, to maybe it was during 5.2, but then I think the innovation came with 5.2. If you were a vSphere customer and you wanted to go to uh, VCF, it was pretty painful. It was kind of a rip and replace. Sure. And my understanding is Broadcom VMware did the engineering to make that a, a, a seamless migration, a frictionless migration. So that's huge. First of all, is that correct? Yeah, so, so when we, we've looked at generations past, and um, so myself, I launched uh, VCF on VxRail. I was a lead product manager for that product uh, back in 2020 when we launched that. Um, so I've seen VCF on VxRail go from zero sales to the you know, juggernaut it is today. Um, and we've seen certainly uh, challenges with upgrading because we have in VCF and VxRail a huge amount of software uh, suites in there uh, from NSX to ESX to vSAN, I could go on, um, that all have to be upgraded at the same time or in a sequence. So when we've looked at like our two to three VCF migration, our three to four VCF migration, four to five is where we really achieved an upgrade and not a migration. And now looking forward with the five to nine jump, uh, we anticipate some of the same, but we want to make sure that we are working very tightly. I mean, I had coffee in a meeting uh, about it this morning on how we make sure that that's an awesome solution for our customers to upgrade uh, and not have you know, enhanced pain when VCF nine comes along. Okay, so Dell is, if not the greatest, it's certainly one of the greatest distribution channels on the planet. Um, so now that you've figured out all the subscription details and everything else, you know you would expect um, a really strong adoption from customers. What are you hearing at this show from customers with respect to the messages that you're you're sharing with them? Sure. Um, and another great question. So you know, like Dell, like you mentioned, we're we're at. Uh, powerhouse for distribution, powerhouse for um, what we can deliver to our customers. Um, from a you know, VxRail perspective, we're seeing a lot of interest in VCF, where VVF you know, and vSphere was the smaller portion of interest maybe before. Um, now, with all the enhanced automation of like STDC Manager, some of the things that are coming up in nine, um, VCF looks to be even bigger than it was before. Um, and we're, we're excited about that. We're excited to grow and enhance the VCF portion of VxRail. Um, personally, I'm very excited for it because I you know, watch it take its first steps. Um, but I really see VCF being the bundle that customers opt for and move forward with and are excited about. Yeah, I mean, that's the flagship skew. Yeah. Right? It's um, you know, by, by force in a way. I mean, Broadcom's sure. making that happen um, with, its, with its marketing, with its emphasis, and with the Frankly, with the value proposition, and like you said, they're bundling, you know, everything in there. Yeah, especially now that vSAN is a part of the VCF bundle, yeah. um, we're seeing, especially on the TCO and financial side, we're seeing customers really um, seeing the benefit and the the economics make more sense with VCF than they ever have before. What about um, alternatives? We've seen uh, Dell just recently announced a relationship with Nutanix, sure. um, and you guys have kind of ebbed and flowed on that. Uh, you know, prior to the EMC acquisition, uh, there was a, 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 a very close relationship. Obviously, EMC storage company, more of a competitor with Nutanix, and then Dell sort of transformed into this, like you said, just a powerhouse. And so you're giving customers choice. Now you're giving them more choice. Yeah. How should customers think about choice? W what are you advising customers with respect to, there was an initial shock of, wait a minute, we have to, we have to go to a subscription model. Um, there's that, sort of knee-jerk reaction. Sure. And so a lot of people are investigating alternatives. Some of them, many, are realizing, well, maybe the grass isn't greener. Yeah. Sometimes it maybe makes sense. Um, what are you telling customers? So from Dell's perspective, um, we just want to be the best landing place for them. Like, I mean, really, whether it's um, VMware, I mean, obviously we're here at VMware Explorer, or uh, VMware Explorer, I still want to call it VMworld in my head sometimes. Um, <laughs> we're here at VMware Explorer, you know, looking at all the, the new innovation that VCF and VMware and all the, the different uh, VMware suites are bringing to VxRail. Um, I believe VxRail is the best landing place for VMware customers, period. Um, and I think the market has proven that out. Um, but 
Dell, I mean, we sell PowerEdge, we've got PowerFlex in our portfolio, which is our intensely, massively scalable, super performance storage system. Uh, we have our uh, storage solutions. We have different, what we call our ACPs or Apex Cloud Platforms for, for Microsoft or um, Red Hat solutions. And now with our, our newly announced uh, Nutanix partnership, what we really want to deliver more than anything is choice to our customers. You know, we've done research and found that I think the average customer has like 2.6 cloud providers, whether that's a VMware or you know, a public cloud provider. And those customers um, want choice. They want the flexibility to put the workloads where it should be. And whether, if the workload should be on VMware, we want the best offering there. If the workload should be on Nutanix, we're going to have a Nutanix offering for our customers. But at Dell, we're huge believers in multi-cloud, and we really want to provide that, that flexibility, that choice, and just to be the best landing place for whatever workload the customer has. Well, and it seems like Broadcom strategy, I mean, we didn't, I don't, I don't think the word multi-cloud came out yesterday in the keynote, so that's white space for you. That's a, it seems like Broadcom is really focusing on the private cloud, um, and, and you know, even though you can containerize workloads and run them anywhere with Tanzu, but, but really multi-cloud is, is a fundamental to Dell's strategy. Um, multi-cloud by design, I think that you guys coined that term. Yep. Um, so what are you seeing with regard to um, multi-cloud interest, adoption, Pain, Sav. Sure, um, you know, and, and I, because um, we have so many different offerings, it can be challenging for a customer to know what to do, um, especially when it comes to the multi-cloud multi space. So what we really say, again, is look at the workload, and then look at not just the workload, but the, the offer and the landing place for it. With so many different options for our customers, um, when, when Customers are looking at, oh, should I re-platform, should I not, should I move, should I not? Um, our incredible sales team and our incredible sales specialists, whether technologists or uh, sales specialists, they can help our customers get to the right place. And you know, I think, I'm a little biased uh, as our VMware team lead here. Bring it. Um, I think our, like I said, our, our VxRail solution is the you know, first co-engineered system. It's the longest uh, in the market. I think it's the best place to be for VMware customers. And we're building up our um, other options, our other platforms, other estates for those for customers who need additional options as well. Why, Sam, defend that statement that it's the best place to be. Why is it the best place to be? Well, that. Um, sure, and a, a, a great stat right now that I, I just love thinking about is with VCF on rail and VX rail in total, um, customers call us for level one, level two support. We have such an incredible staff of support engineers that uh, only 3% of any case, uh, our, of our caseload gets uh, moved up to level three at VMware. That means we solve 97% of problems in-house. That doesn't happen overnight. You know, even if you were going to stand up a product today, um, there's no way you could hire the right amount of people with the right skill set to get our customers 97% of in-house resolution. That's just one of the items that I think makes VxRail the best, best um, VMware landing spot. It's the Dell sort of promise, the trusted brand, the service experience. What about the product? How was the product, how was that hyper-converged space evolving? Sure. Take us inside, what's it look like? Um, you know, hyper-converged, HCI, you know, remember we had the, um, I guess it was converged infrastructure, mm -hmm. which was kind of like big giant bolts, you know, screwing together, compute, storage, <laughs> and networking. Yeah. Um, and then the whole software-defined software, software -defined data center, sure. which at the time we called software-led infrastructure, turned into SDDC. Anyway, how has that evolved? What's it look like today? Oh yeah, and that, it's, that's a great question, and something I'm also pretty happy about, because I, I started with Dell, um, almost 10 years ago, nine years and change, uh, selling V-Blocks. So I've gone from the converged infrastructure space to the software-defined space to the hyper-converged space, and watching that evolution has been one of the great interests of my career. Um, with VxRail, where we, I mean, honestly, when we started, there was this conception about hyper-converged that it was the space for VDI, that, oh, that's just a VDI thing. But then, wait a minute, 
No, it's the space for general workloads. Wait a minute, no, it's the space for high intense performant databases. And now we're seeing adoption at the core data center, we're seeing it as a cloud offering, we're seeing it as um, edge locations where we're putting one node, a satellite, VxRail satellite node, yeah. or our new VD4000 two node system with a built-in witness. I mean, seeing that evolution of VxRail, um, where we've gone from, you know, uh, core data center to cloud to edge and having a solution for VxRail, uh, really at whatever the use case, whatever the workload, has been the, the most fun I've ever had in my career watching that evolution. That's interesting, because I remember that. It was always, a, oh yeah, this is you know, kind of VDI and, and, and virtual desktop. And I was like, oh, that's disappointing. Should yeah. be so much more. And I always felt like it could be, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear it extended into you know, many more workloads, and of course now to the edge. Sam, yeah. uh, I'll give you the last word. What do you want sure. to be able to say a year from now that you can't say today? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one, that's a great question. Um, a year from now, I want to say that I, well, that I can't say today. Well, I know a year from now, I want to say that I've seen our, our VxRail customer base grow even further. We've got 21, over 21,000 customers in the world today. We've got 310,000 deployed nodes. Um, we have more opportunity now with Broadcom and the Broadcom sales motion and, and the new um, uh, systems, v VMware 9, VCF 9, uh, than we ever have before. What I can't say today, that's, that's challenging, but I, <laughs> what I know I want to say is I want to see the VxRail customers that know and love the system have an even better experience with it a year from now. I want to see customers who haven't dabbled in VxRail or haven't um, really bought into the Broadcom message, buy in, see what VxRail can deliver for you, and I want to see Dell be the best landing place for workloads, period. Awesome. Sam, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely. Appreciate it, best of luck. Thank you so All much. Right. And keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante, Rob Strecce as well is in the house, VMware Explore 2024. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back, right after this short break. <laughs>